Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and it is February 3rd. And uh, let's see. So, yeah, we are at the end of the month here, and I do have some uh, some production going. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, stuff is being moved into my distribution warehouse, which is really cool. So if we go to here, uh, we have, excuse me. Let's see, we have flour uh, coming into the distribution warehouse, and then that's being put into, from there, the bakery. Uh, so we have eight, 89, uh, 34 liters. In fact, let's just look at the bakery, because the basically, I don't know if it's the distribution warehouse. I think what's happening is either the game puts the stuff into the distribution warehouse and then it forwards it on to the production or it puts it into the production. And once the production is full, then the excess will go to the distribution warehouse. Uh, but I think it's the first thing. And, and the reason I think that is because if we look at the flower here uh, in, in the logistics warehouse, you can see that there's some in there. So that seems to suggest that it's putting it in the warehouse and the warehouse is forwarding it on to the other locations. Um, but it's cool, you know, to kind of start to see it in action here. So if we take and put some milk in our bakery, uh, you know what we actually, you know what I should be doing is I should be putting the milk in the warehouse because in the warehouse we'll distribute it between the dairy and the bakery. Yeah, that's probably what I should be doing now that I think about it. Uh, but anyway, we've got chocolate uh, production going now, so that's cool. Um, it is storing the chocolate here in the warehouse. So we got 516 liters of chocolate. Awesome. Um, you know, we're just going to have to call that white chocolate, by the way, because it <laughs> it, bugged, it bugs me a little bit that uh, we're making chocolate and we're missing the, the most important ingredient, ingredient in chocolate, um, you know, cocoa. It's like making beer without barley or French fries without potatoes, you know. <laughs> It's just, so we're going to call it, we're going to pretend that's white chocolate. That way I can sleep better at night. Anyway, um, yeah, the sugar factory is, is doing good and has moved again, a lot of the sugar into the bakery here. And so we actually have all the ingredients we need to make cake except for milk. So that's why, uh, you know what I think I'll do too, is I'm going to put the milk in the, uh, well, wait a minute. I think I, what did I, did I do get the milk already? No, I haven't gotten the milk. I got it yesterday. So we're going to grab this just little bit of milk that we have here in it, and I'm going to put it in the warehouse this time instead of in the dairy directly. And it should distribute at least part of it, I would think, to the bakery. And if that happens, then we can start making cake and, and or bread. Uh, okay. So anyway, let's see. What do we got to do today? We have, um, let's see, the cows are good for food. The sheep are good good for food. I mean, they still have a hundred percent. It's like they don't need anything, but they're producing wool, which is fine with me. Uh, so animals overall are in very good shape. I do have a bunch of eggs I need to pick up and put into the warehouse. Uh, let's take a look at our greenhouses. Our greenhouses need seed. So we're, we're, we're getting low on seed. The manure in the water is in good shape, but we do have to get some seed in those. So that's probably the first thing we will do. And then, yeah, this is just you know, and milk is, is what's kind of holding me up because now we have two productions consuming milk, not just one. Uh, but, you know, we can't do anything about that in, except for to let time pass by. We have made a little bit of fabric. Um, but we're, you know, I've got uh, a little bit of wool that we can go pick up too. Uh, and if we look here, we have, uh, let's see, we have 88 liters of fabric stored. Now, that should be distributing, though, to the tailoring, but I haven't enabled it yet. So, oh, actually, it's already in there. Okay, so, yeah, we need to activate this. It's going to cost us 240 bucks a month, so that's more expensive, but that makes sense because this is a really high-end product, maybe one of the most lucrative products in the game, as a matter of fact. Well, at least uh, in terms of, you know, what you can get for it. <laughs> And so let's activate that. We could, there's no reason not to activate bread. So let's activate bread right now. And then uh, we want that to go to distributing. So it goes back into the warehouse. We want cake to be distributing. And um, that's 60 bucks a month. Yeah, well, we're going to, let's activate it right now because I want to see if it's going to actually 
work once the warehouse distributes the stuff in there. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I have to start paying attention as well to what stuff sells when, because now that we have a lot more products, um, it's not always just going to be in January. For example, uh, if we look at flour, well, flour's in December. Cake, cake is September. Uh, clothing is April, which is an interesting month. So, yeah, we want to sell our clothes in April. We won't have a ton of them this this first April, but next next year we'll have quite a bit. If we wanted to sell sugar, sugar's actually good all through the summer and into September, which is interesting. And let's see, chocolate sells best in January. So, yeah, again, I just have to pay attention to the best time to sell this stuff because it's not always just going to be January. Uh, eggs still continue to sell best in October, November. However, uh, we want those to go to our productions first and foremost. We'll only sell the eggs if we have a surplus. All right, so two, the two main things we have to get done before we move on to March is we have to get seeds into our greenhouses and we have to uh, pick up the eggs. So let's go, let's do the eggs first. So I'm going to run over and grab the telehandler. Okay, also, uh, I've decided at least for for now, temporarily, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to just store the tanker over by the, the cow barn. And the reason for that is because the tanker is enclosed and it's stainless steel. And uh, I'd rather have my, my open trailer undercover uh, than this. Okay, so let's load up on the little bit of milk we have. And again, like this time, like I said, we're going to put this in the warehouse instead of in the dairy. Dairy actually has a little bit of milk in it anyways, not very much, but a little bit. I think it's about time for us to wash our pickup truck. I still haven't changed OG's clothes yet either. <laughs> hmm, it didn't give me an option to offload it. Huh. I mean, it has milk. Or wait, no, that's not what the right thing. It shows... Oh, it doesn't show milk. Oh. Oh, okay. I, I must have mis misunderstood that. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to manually put the milk in the bakery and the dairy. That's fine, though. Uh, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, must, I was looking at the wrong thing because I was thinking that warehouse also had milk in it, but it doesn't. So it's really supposed to be a pallet warehouse anyways, which kind of makes sense that it wouldn't have milk then. So let's drop this load off at the, at the bakery then. And we should be able to get started with making cake and bread for that matter. Cake's going to be the more valuable thing though. All right, so we want to come back this way. Should give me an option for dropping the milk off. There we go. That's what we wanted to see. Cool. Okay, so now if we go into the bakery here. Um, we've already activated bread and cake. There we go. Okay. And it'll distribute both of those items into our warehouse to store until the time comes to sell. Beautiful. 
Got quite a few eggs already in there. Actually, that milk filled it up a lot more than I thought it would. So hopefully, you know, we can get ahead of this with our current milk production and not always be lagging behind. If we are, we might have to think about getting a, the larger cow barn sooner than, you know, than I had planned. In fact, I hadn't, I don't, hadn't really planned a specific time to do that. I just figured sometime in the future we would, but... You know, now that we have these productions, we, we got to keep them supported. So we'll just, you know, I'm going to give it a few months and just kind of see how things go before I, you know, make those kinds of decisions. It probably would be useful for us to get another tanker at some point, too. Um, we don't even necessarily need one this big for the milk. I would keep this one for the water. All right, fantastic. So we got that done. Uh, now we need to go do seeds in the greenhouses. So that is next on the list. Yeah, we're definitely going to need to get more seeds. So let's just... I can tell you right now this isn't even going to be close to enough. So... Let's just fill the thing up. 27,000. But we need them. Primarily for the warehouses, but we can also use them, of course, for uh, seeding contracts, sewing contracts when they come up. And, of course, for our own sewing, if we end up doing that this year. Just depends upon, you know, what fields. I mean, ideally, I'd like to purchase the fields that are contiguous with our farm, but it may not work out that way and if it doesn't it doesn't you know there's always two the option of field flipping now before you freak out for those of you who know what I mean if I purchased a field with a crop on it for the purpose of harvesting the crop and then turned around and sold it I would first replant it why are you not giving me the option to tip this there we go. I wasn't close enough. Uh, yeah, I would first replant it before I resold it. Um, there's a thing that people will do in this game where in the base game, you can buy a field with a crop on it, harvest the crop, and then turn around and sell the field for the exact same amount of money. It's called field flipping. And, you know, that's not something that I would... Well, if I do that, I'm going to make sure it has a new crop on it first. But let's just put it that way. Because, I mean, you know, all pretty much all the crops in the game all just use the same generic seed and we just switch it over to whatever. So, if I, if I do a field flip, I will make sure that I put a crop on it before I resell it. And then that way, it's not, there's really no harm done. Okay. And then I believe the water and the manure is still in pretty good shape in the greenhouses. We probably won't need to worry about that for another... Oh, yeah. For probably three or four months before we have to really concern ourselves with that stuff. I've never really um, figured out you know, what the actual profit of these greenhouses are, you know, if you deduct the, the seeds. And, you know, they, they are obviously a lot more expensive if you're putting granular fertilizer in them than manure. But remember, manure is not really free. I mean, we had to make all the investment in the cows and the continual, continual feeding of them to get that manure. So it's not really free either. But... I think it's better than using granular fertilizer when it's all said and done. Okay, we'll put the rest of these seeds back in here. Cool. All right, that takes care of that. So I think we're finished with February. And we're ready to move into March, which is going to be our first hay cutting on our hay. And also we'll open up some contracts probably fertilizer contracts among other things and we could try um, some manure spreading for those
Yeah, I figured it made more sense to put this trailer under cover and keep the tanker out because the tanker's stainless steel and it's, you know, sealed. So I'd like to get that flatbed trailer, uh, our second flatbed bed trailer under cover too, but they're just so, you know, that gone long is the problem with them. So it's just, it'll be there, fine there for now. Okay, so yeah, we are done. Let's park the fence and then we will sleep and move into March. Oh, let's look at our finances too. You guys have pretty much seen, you know, everything we've done though in February already, but we'll look at it anyway. Okay. This is uh, what's in the sales. Now that's tempting, I gotta say. Um, I can't really say we absolutely need it though. Um, you know, because we still have the 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 Deutsche Far uh, combine, but you know, at some point, especially now that we have the grain mill, um, we're gonna have to up our grain game, which and part of that's gonna be a better combine. But I don't think we really need that right now, and that's just a discard which we don't need, as far as the sales go. Okay, let's take a look at our ledger. So in February, we didn't purchase anything. We spent, uh, this money came from that bridge. I think that we put in, wait, did it? We put in, oh no, it's 5,000. The, the bigger one's 10. Okay. So yeah, that's where that money came from. Okay. That explains it. All right. So property maintenance is 769. So this number now I think is, comes out of our, you know, monthly expenses for production. Cause I'm not seeing any other place that it comes out. Water costs have, it has gone up now cause we have sheep barns too. And then this was 8,100 of this was for paying our workers when we went to market. And then I took out another 3,200, you know, to pay our monthly pallet moving worker. And I think, I think that's actually, yeah, that comes out to 11, three. And so, yeah, this is where we are at the end of the month, $83,523, because we have also purchased that seed, even though that doesn't show up in the ledger. Uh, anything we buy for our little silos over there doesn't appear in the ledger for some reason. I don't know why, but it doesn't. And those are even, I don't even think, well, actually, maybe those are modded. I can't remember. That could be why. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Well, anyway, that is it for February the 3rd. Uh, we're going to sleep, and I will see you on March the 1st. Let's do this. All right, welcome everybody to March the 1st, and we actually have snow on the ground. Look at that. How funny. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the weather report because we have hay to cut. We don't necessarily have to do that today. We just have to do it in March. Uh, let's see, weather. So, that's yeah, supposed to be sunny all day and in the 50s and 60s. So, why? Wait a minute. What? It says it's eight o'clock right now, and it says it's supposed to be 54 degrees, but it's only 35. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, this will probably clear up later because I don't think we can cut our hay when there's snow in the field. It's not something you would do in real life. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, hopefully that'll clear up here in a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at let's take a look at the sales. What do we got in here? We have a Delbo roller, a disc harrow, a cultivator, and a disc harrow. Okay, so nothing really in the sales that we're interested in there. Um, let's look at our critters. Chickens are good. Cows are good for a little bit longer. Sheep. What what is up with this? How how is it that? How is it that these guys have not consumed? Okay, well, they've consumed hay or grass. Why haven't these guys? They're producing wool, so I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm <laughs> confused about that. Anyway, okay. Um, so greenhouses uh, should be fine. We took care of all those, yeah, last, uh, last month. And let's see, let's, okay, these guys are all out of milk. You still have barley in the mill, so you're doing good. You still have sugar beets in the mill. 
Uh, you need wool, so we're going to have to take some wool to the spinnery. And look at that, we got clothes. Nice. Okay. Um, actually, that shouldn't be storing, though. That should be distributing. So, and then you're making bread and cake. Very nice. Okay, so we should see that product in the warehouse. Look at that. So we have 319 liters of cake. And we have 720 liters of bread. Now, the cool thing about this stuff, you guys, um, is that, you know, the more products that we get, and more specifically, the more spread out their, you know, their, their, their sale months are, the more income we're going to have, you know, throughout the year. I, I hope that made sense. <laughs> Seems like I made that more complicated than it needed to be. But yeah, I mean, last year, we pretty much, uh, aside from contracts, of course, you know, we had to wait till the end of the year to get get all of our money. Now, when we did, we got a huge payday, of course, but it would just be nice to have some money coming in, you know, on another month besides just January of our product, you know, not counting, again, contracts. Um, I was going to say something else about that, but I can't remember what it was now. Okay, so let's see. We need to move some wool, and we need to move some milk. Uh, so let's do that. In fact, I wanted to look at something else. Uh, the bakery... Yeah, the bakery's still actually doing pretty good on milk. So, yeah, we just got to get that milk into the dairy. Uh, you know what I probably sh should do? Well, I should either drive my pickup back over here, or maybe we should think about... Yeah, actually, I'm going to drive the pickup back over here. Maybe I should think about getting, like, um, one of those little Mahondras or a John Deere Gator or something to just kind of put putt around on the farm. No, we'll run. We'll run today. It's, it's good to get the steps in and the the cardio and all that anyhow. So if this snow doesn't... You know, what I'll probably do after I get the chores done is I'll probably fast forward the time. And if the snow doesn't clear up, we might just have to go into tomorrow before we cut the hay. It's not that big of a deal, really. If we, you know, if we wait another day or so. Hi, cows! Oh, wow, look at this. That's a nice little supply of wool. And you still... Oh, I know I know why these guys are sh appear not to be eaten, because they still have extra hay here that hasn't been fed in. Okay, that makes sense now. I'm just, like, scratching my head. Going, what in the world is going on here? Look at you, cuddy little feller. How are you? What's your name? Sammy the sheep? Aw, oh, you're cute. <laughs> you know what I wished, too? Um, I wish this game had more to it in terms of, like, for example, the wool just magically appears here. I wish we had to take shears to the sheep and actually, you know, shear the, the wool off of them. But, yeah, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it would just be more realistic is all. But it is what it is, so... Can't complain. Okay, anyway, let's uh, take this milk over to the dairy, and then we'll take the wool over to the um, the tailor. Or not the tailor, the spinnery. Okay, we got 2250 liters here. That should keep the dairy going for a little while, anyway. I'm just curious, you know, over a period of several months, if if we have enough cows to support... Oh, I, I should have gone the other way. That's right. If we have enough cows to support these two productions, or if we're going to need to upgrade. All right, so we got some milk in our dairy now. It's a winter wonderland. More snow in March than we had in all winter. In fact, I don't think we had... I, I don't remember having any accumulation of snow in December, January, and February in the game here. I think it snowed maybe once or twice overnight, but that was pretty much it. Okay, so we're just going to leave you here. And we'll take the pickup 
back so we have something to get around the farm in. Cardio is good, but you know, running does kind of suck. <laughs> when you have chores to do anyway. Okay, we'll park here and go pick up the wool and get that into the spinnery. It's fun, you know, th this game, I mean, I've thoroughly enjoyed this game all along, as you guys know, but, um, whoops, where am I going? Having these, you know, productions and, and now had it, having more daily or monthly, whatever, chores to do just adds a whole nother level of enjoyment to everything. There are mods, too, that will distribute animal products um and i i thought about getting them i just don't understand why the base game doesn't do that though already what's the difference between automatically distributing wool to your spinnery versus automatically distributing strawberries to your bakery you know what i'm saying it just doesn't compute in my brain maybe that's Okay, I got a I got a theory. Maybe the reason for that is, you know, we don't have to shear the sheep. So maybe the way the giants have kind of compensated for that is we have to use the extra steps and we don't have to milk the cows, right? So we have to do these extra steps of moving the product. Could be. Honestly, though, I'd rather shear the sheep and milk the cows. <laughs> Part of the part of the fun of farming, man. Maybe future versions of the game will do that. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Okay, this is a pretty nice little batch of wool here. Let's take a look at the spinnery now and see. I just curious to see how much that's filled it up. Uh, right here. Oh, not much. <laughs> okay, well, it'll get it going for a while. Maybe we'll get a big juicy cotton contract uh, in the fall, and we can put some cotton in here too. I, I'm, I mentioned this before, but I'm not intending to farm cotton myself, at least not now. It's just so expensive, you know, for the equipment to do that. But we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, I think that takes care of our March chores, or at least our March 1st chores. Um, how is the cows actually doing on, on straw? I think they're, yeah, they're okay. We, we do need to pay attention to that soon, but not, don't have to worry about it right now. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is go back to the house, and I'm going to speed up time and see if the snow disappears. And if it doesn't, then we'll just move into March 2nd uh, and then do the hay then. All right, guys, uh, so it is about 11 o'clock in the morning, and the snow has disappeared. I forgot to look at the contracts, though, so let's look at those first. Okay, we're pretty much taking any fertilizing contract that comes up. We are not taking weeding contracts. All right, nice. So we got a bunch of fertilizing contracts. Uh, this is definitely the biggest one. Um, why don't we... Yeah, you know what? We can wait on the hay. Let's, let's, let's do some manure spreading. We haven't done that yet. We got that new trailer in January, um, so let's give it a try. Now the thing that I'm kind of expecting to happen, based upon you know what I've seen from other people playing the game, is that oh for goodness sakes, that's because my steering wheel is messed up again. We'll just pretend that never happened. 
<laughs> crash a brand new tractor into a tree, man, for goodness sakes. Um, the, the thing about manure spreading is that it runs out pretty quickly. So I want to try it on a small field first and just kind of see how that goes. And then we'll, you know, kind of go from there. Let's load her up here. Because obviously, if we, you know, if we run out, um, I mean, this trailer's taking over half of it already. So if we run out before we're done, that's <laughs> not gonna work too well, is it? We might have to wait for it, it to really accumulate before this makes sense. But remember, the main purpose of the manure on my farm is to keep the greenhouses going, though it does a really good job of that, for sure. Okay, so let's see. Field. Uh, all right, hold on a second. Oh, 82, right. Okay, so 78 and 82. Those, both of those are pretty small, and they're down this direction. So let's try those out first, and we'll see how it goes. Now we also have the slurry too, but I don't have a a slurry uh, sprayer, I guess, spreader or sprayer attachment. So I, my plan for that is to just let it continue building up until you know it either gets all the way filled up or something comes on sale that you know we want to buy. Because some for something like that, you know, it's got to be big or it's just it takes way too long. Have, you know, it has to have good coverage. Okay, 73 is pretty big. I don't think we can cover all of 73 with this. So let's hit the smaller fields first. Just to kind of get a feel for, for this. Okay, so let's see here. Turn on trailer, activate double application rate. No, we don't want to do that for a contract. We would do that maybe for our own field, but... You have to unfold this? Oh, I guess you do. That must be a gate that lifts up and lets the manure fall through. Okay. Okay, that's a decently wide swath there. It's not actually going down that quickly, but we're not doing double application though either, so... Uh, too bad you couldn't um, reduce the spread width on this. I wonder if I could do something more like this. Just to kind of stretch it out a little more. No, oh, we got a fence there. We don't need to keep that on. Oh, stop. Fertilizing's one of those jobs that's... Oh, crap. Then I'd turn it off. <laughs> Best done with a bird's eye view. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, I know I didn't completely finish it, but since manure is precious here... Can't believe I'm saying poop is precious, but it is. Um, we're not going to worry too much about it. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, there... 78... Here, let's look at the big view of the map. 
Yeah, 78 is the next size up. Okay, so that's just this guy right over here. Harvested this couple of times. Cultivated a lot of times. So I think we want to start right about here. Okay, it's not using it as quickly as I was expecting it to. So that's good. And we should be able to cover the whole field. Or close enough to it anyway. Oh yeah. We got this, man. We got this. It is nice, though, that with manure, you can do a double application rate. Okay, so 78's done. Okay, so 77. Well, let's... I don't think we're going to be able to get this whole field done, but let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Look at that, man. Well, <clears throat> as far as the contract is concerned, we finished it, so <laughs> we're going to do it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that uh, that worked a little bit better than I was expecting in terms of, you know, just the consumption rate. Um, but I think those were probably the smallest fields. Yeah, those were the smallest fields. So I don't think I'm going to spread any more manure. I'm just going to use granular on the other stuff because I, I still have quite a bit of granular uh, in the silo and I'm not really using it for anything else and we'll just let the manure build back up and then probably the MO for that's going to be you know let the bunker fill up most of the way and then we'll do as much as we can on contracts that we take and then the rest will have to continue to be granular so that worked out pretty good though not, not too bad okay let's park this guy and then um, I'm going to um, I think let's get started on hay and I can finish the rest of the fertilizing contracts later. But uh, yeah, this, this little spreader wagon thingy worked out pretty good. We got that on sale in uh, January, I think it was. Okay, so for the hay, here's the thing. Uh, what do you guys said in the comments to try and see if the lizard rake, you know, the big V rake, if I set a worker loose on that, if it'll stop to let the, the pottinger wrap the bales. I don't think it will. I think I tested that and it didn't work, but I can't remember for absolute sure. So we, we're going to do a quick little test on that to see. Um, so let's get the Pottinger on here because if that does work, you know, one thing I realized after the fact when I was loading all the bales to take to market is that it appears that you can put like 150 centimeter bales inside of the bale storage, but then you can take them back out as the smaller bales if you you know if you want to and I didn't even realize that until right at the very end when 
I had accidentally uh, pulled out round straw bales instead of square bales. And I got to thinking, well, wait a minute. If it lets me do it that with straw, I bet you it would let me do it with the silage too. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. Now, the other thing I've been thinking about too is possibly doing loose silage in bunkers. But, see, the thing about that is... It's a lot easier to get the hay off the field because you just use a forage wagon. But then you have to, you know, compact the silage and you have to, you know, and then you have to load it with a, I don't think you can, you know, magically load it up. Or maybe you can, I don't know. If you can't, then, you know, you have to get a big bucket loader or like a buck rake or something like that to, to load it up. So it's less work on the front end but more work on the back end kind of thing so i'm not really sure if in the long run bunker silage is a good idea for the purpose of selling now for the purpose of your own use uh, I, I can definitely see you know more of an advantage to that so again you know uh, it, those of you who are more experienced with the game for the purpose of selling is does it make sense to do bunker silage or should I just keep you know doing the round bales like I've been doing uh, I'd be curious to know looks like I left my lights on not that that matters in this game but let's turn them off anyways okay so we're gonna uh, we're gonna mow some hay with the big M and just do like a little quick test to see if the worker will stop to let the bale yeah, well, it's not really the wrapping so much. It's the ejecting of the bale that it has to stop for. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm certainly willing to test it again just because I can't remember for sure. So it's worth, you know, worth doing. So let's get this guy started over here. And, you know, if it, if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to... Hmm, I'm probably just going to lease the fast baler again for now. Because if I buy it, it's going to take up all my money. Plus, I'm going to have to take out a little bit of a loan. And I kind of, you know, I mean, if we have to take out a loan, we have to take out a loan to get what we need. There's, I don't have a problem with that, but I'd rather not if we don't have to, you know. Um. So, yeah, this is in windrowing mode, which is what we want. No, nope, wrong button. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna do the headland and then um, probably set another worker loose to finish the mowing and then we'll, we'll do that test.
Do I have everything hooked up here? Yeah, I think so. Oh, this thing's already about to pop out of bail, so let's let's do that one ourselves. These are on 150s, right? Yeah. Okay, let's just turn him loose and see what he does. I'm in the tractor with him, but I'm not driving. He is now. He's going to get caught up on that power pole. Yeah, I think he didn't like the pole there. So, you know, when the AI is working this, I think that they think, right, that they're windrowing. Because that's really what this is, is a windrower. Here, we'll do this bail too. Okay, let's get him going down this direction. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah, no, he isn't stopping. Okay, that's what I thought it was, but I couldn't remember for sure, so it was definitely worth testing. Okay, well, now that we know that, um, what we're going to do is get the fast baler. And we'll have these three 150s to drop off, but I, once we get him in the container. We can pull them out as the smaller ones later, I believe. So I'm going to I'm gonna do this method for one more year, but if you guys tell me in the comments that it's better to do bunker silage for selling, that's very important that you make that distinction. You know, then maybe we'll change that up for the, the next year. I was going to do that even for my own farm, but I mean, you know, making the little tubes here worked out so well that it's like, well, let's just do that. <laughs> and it has. It's worked out exceptionally well for our needs anyways. Oh, did that guy stop? Probably got confused with the irregular shape here. I've noticed actually that it works better to start the worker on that end of the, on the far end of the field. Um, because he tends, he, she, whatever, tends to, uh, do a stick with it longer before they derp out. So we'll grab this little piece here. So, yeah, let's start them over on this side. Okay. All right, yeah, so, um... I, I think, eh, yeah, I think I'm going to just lease the fast baler. And hopefully it'll come up for sale. If it doesn't, you know, it costs us a little over 5000 each time we lease it. And we use it four times a year, right? So that's 20000 Well, it's actually a little more than that. So we'll say 25000 a year to lease it. Whereas if we just outright buy it, it's going to cost us over a hundred grand. And we could pay for the bulk of... Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot about something, you guys. I installed the Lease to Own mod, and I haven't e even used it yet. We should we should try that. Um, So... i got to figure out... Remember how that works, though. 
if we okay that's just the normal lease let me um let me look at that real quick and i'll, I'll bring you right back I, i'm gonna actually park the pottinger first though all right guys i took a look at that and uh, basically the lease to own situation is pretty straightforward you lease a vehicle or an implement and the payments that you make on the lease are deducted from the uh you know from the item and if you take the lease all the way to the purchase price it's basically the residual value of it ends up being about 22 percent of the purchase price itself um so pretty straightforward and so i think that makes sense let's just try it anyway just for the heck of it now so what we're going to do is we're going to go to baylor's here and we're going to grab the fast baylor and we're going to lease it for 5610 but if we now look in here we have the option to purchase it and so the payments that i make each month for leasing this baylor will subtract from the purchase <clears throat> now um the math on it works out to where you pay a little bit more for it in the long run, but not, from what I could tell, not substantially. So if you guys are curious, just look up uh, Lease to Own on the Mod Hub to see the author's description of it. Uh, nevertheless, that's what we're going to do. We're basically just going to lease it perpetually until A, I either decide to buy it or B, it actually comes up for sale uh, on the used equipment. And then at that point, we'll decide which one is, you know, makes the best sense for us to purchase. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and hook up to the fast baler here. And we will not, like I said, we will not be returning this. We're just going to lease it perpetually until we actually purchase it or, you know, find one on sale at a better price. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we have to figure out where we're going to put this thing. <laughs> um, we have room. We have, we have another bay out at the the cow shed so yeah I'll, i don't know i'll figure that out later but right now um let's just get this guy bailing here uh oh he stopped okay usually the mower will um actually cross over to the next field but apparently the spacing of it made it so that he didn't and actually, too, let's see, let me think about this for a second. Okay, only have one mower, so I think I'm gonna just do the mowing for now while I have the worker start on the bailing. Yeah, that seems to make the most sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff unfolded here. I gotta get the these two larger bales picked up too. Um, he's going to actually, here, I'm going to do this headland here and then I'll, I'll get him set on the field. Cause otherwise I think he's going to have problems or he'll go to the end and then he'll stop is most likely what will happen with the headland. I wonder too, if it would actually work better for me not to windrow, if, you know, if we're going to use this method, uh, at least, you know, for the AI, I don't know. And I haven't really decided yet if this method's better or if follow me's better. The nice thing about this is I can just set them loose and let them go at it, you know, and then I can do other things. Whereas with follow me, they I have to, well, have them follow me, right? But follow me's, the upside to follow me is that it's a little more um, reliable, maybe is the word? Because I, I have more direct control over what the AI is doing. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out, though. We're going nine... Well, okay, we were going seven miles an hour. The one thing I've noticed about this baler, too, is if you use it with the rake... It slows it down, which makes sense because, you know, you're using more horsepower. Um, but I have noticed that if you're not using it with the rake, it actually goes relatively fast. Let's turn around this way. 
<laughs> I can't get that thing to swing around the other direction. Okay, let's do it this way. There we go. All right. Uh, looks like there's some stuff on the edge there, but let's just start him right here. All right, we'll let him go at it and see how things go. And then I can, you know, as usual, I'll pick up the, the slack at the end there. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to take care of the mowing here. And um, let that guy do his thing, and then we'll we'll see how things go. But guys, I think we're probably out of time in this episode. I haven't really been keeping track of the time, but I got a feeling like uh, this is about time for us to end. So what I'm going to do is cut the hay and um, get it baled up and stored, and then I'll bring you guys back in. Let's see, we we still have the fertilizer contracts too. So these fertilizer contracts, I'm just going to use granular. I do have. Um, uh, I have t uh, I have 3,000 liters and change of solid fertilizer, and if I have to buy a little bit more, I have to buy a little bit more. It's no, no big deal. Uh, but I'll get those done. I'll get the hay taken care of, and then I'll bring you guys back at the end of March for an end-of-the-month update to start the next episode. With that being said, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.